I may not remember everything, but I'll always remember Nene Leakes quotes. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I am Raphael and I'm here to review episode 13 of The Real Housewives About to Fuck Sharice Up of Potomac. We start the episode off at Karen's house and she's looking around for her husband, Ray. She finds him, so she tells him, Hi, my baby. Hey, baby. I'm so excited to be going to Mexico with the girls. I'm so excited, my baby. Ray, he's telling Karen, Wait, you're going to Mexico? What for? As if she didn't already explain to him the night before about her trip, but okay. So Karen, she goes on to explain, Well, yes, we're all going to Mexico to celebrate Ashley Darby's 34th birthday. Me and Ashley have decided to be co-hosts of this entire trip and me and Ashley have both decided to take Wendy with us first because a lot of people in the group do not want to talk to Wendy. And then we see in the flashback after Karen's one woman show with 50 performances and 50 guests that we see that Ashley had told the group, oh, I decided for my birthday, let's all go to Mexico. So Ashley, she was the only one excited and everybody else was just like, mm, Mexico? Mm, I mean, I don't know, I guess. I mean, I, I guess I could take time off of work. And I'm like, wait, since when did Mexico become a place that nobody wants to visit? <laughs> Maybe because I never visited and they probably gone like a hundred times. They weren't that excited, but I'm like, well, damn, what a tough crowd. <laughs> We then see Giselle in the middle of the highway driving and she gets a phone call from Robin. She picks up and she starts telling Robin about her doctor appointment and how she just got a biopsy done. Robin, she starts telling her that she went through the same thing and that it was painful. So Giselle, she gets a little nervous and then she informs Robin, well, the doctors also found a couple of fibroids that are way too enlarged in me. And instead of them just removing it with a regular surgery, they're gonna have to maybe remove my entire uterus altogether. And I just, I really felt for Giselle in this moment. She was so concerned and worried. She was telling Robin, well, how is sex going to be like after you know they do the whole surgery am i going to be able to walk how is life going to be and i just really 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 wish that giselle would talk about this more often or you know talk about her issues or talk about what she's going through in her life because you could tell or at least what it looked like that she just wanted to cry in this moment just talking about this and talking about her fears and her nervousness and everything but you know instead we just get giselle being messy 24 7 in other people's marriages and i just wish that she would show, show us her much more vulnerable side her softer side her the other side of Giselle you know you could also be messy but we could also see this side of you too you know because I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of women who are watching this show who are either going through the same thing or have gone through the same thing and they could probably give you you know words of encouragement instead of just dragging you week after week after week but of course the second that we started seeing a different side of Giselle she pulls it all back and she goes right back to her old ways she starts telling Robin so Robin I was asking the doctors is it okay for me to go on this cast trip to Mexico they told me well I mean I guess I suppose everything is okay for you to go so of course Giselle was just like nothing is gonna stop me I'm still gonna go to Mexico and I'm gonna stir this pot and I want to find out what the issue is between Karen and Sharice and I'm like wow Giselle no matter what life throws at her she is still going to be in other people's business <laughs> So then she starts talking about Karen's event, you know, the one with 1,500 guests. She starts telling Robin, yeah, I don't know what was going on with that. I mean, the, the whole event was sloppy. She was doing this. She was doing that. It was just all over the place and very unorganized. And I'm like, now, wait a minute, Giselle. I was just praising you and Robin's event like two reviews ago. And now you want to be talking bad about Karen's event as if you sold out Madison Square Garden? Like, relax. You have 15 people in the crowd. And now all of a sudden, oh, you know, Karen's event was terrible. If hers was bad, yours and Robin was just as just is equally bad even though i would rather go to your event though <laughs> Then she starts talking about how wrong it was that Karen didn't invite Sharice to her event personally and how wrong that was and how mean it was and how they shouldn't do that to Sharice because Sharice is going to feel left out and how they're all friends and they're all supposed to be getting along. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So Giselle, it's wrong of Karen to not invite Sharice when obviously she has an issue with her. But when you and Robin and Mia do it to Wendy a couple of episodes ago in Miami, that was okay and nobody had an issue then you never said anything then robin she never said anything then if anything we all remember her rmz aka tmz moment we still haven't forgotten about that robin just because the drama is on sharice and karen now we still have not forgotten about your foolishness a couple of episodes ago <laughs> And it was okay for Mia to throw a drink in her fit in Wendy's face. That was all okay, right? It was okay when you, all three of you were icing Wendy out of the group. But now that Karen did something to Cherise, all of a sudden that's crossing the line. Do y'all smell that? 
It smells like hypocritical to me, Giselle, but okay. So she goes on to say, yeah, I don't get what's Karen's issue against Sharice. When all three of us got along, we got along and we were the best of friends. I don't get why she hates her so much. And Giselle, she's playing dumb for the cameras because she revealed on Carlos King's podcast that she knows what exactly the issue is that Sharice has against Karen, the secret that she has against Karen, and why Karen hates her. It's just she doesn't want to be the one to reveal it. She said on the podcast, oh, I'm going to wait for Sharice to say something, and then I'm going to say something because I don't want to be the one to open my my mouth about it first. I've been respectful enough to Karen to not reveal anything because we all remember the fight on the very first episode of last season. You know, when Karen and uh, Giselle got at it at the dinner table and Giselle was just like, oh yeah, Karen, I'm going to reveal your whole truth, your whole truth, your broke truth, your this truth, your that truth. Remember that fight? So she also referred to that on the podcast with Carlos King. She said, oh yeah, that what I was talking about back then, that's what uh, that's what Sharice is talking about when she says, oh, she knows something against Karen. So Giselle, I'm on to you. I see what you're doing. She obviously knows, but she respects Karen enough to not to reveal that on camera. And then side note, was it just me that felt very uncomfortable with Giselle talking on the phone with Robin? And at the same time, she was on the phone, but she, her hands were like not on the wheel. She was just like, I just don't understand why Karen was being so mean to Sharice. Like, I really don't understand. Yeah, no, me, me neither. Hold on. Give me one second. I'm thirsty a little bit. I'm going to get some juice. You yeah, know, I don't understand either. Hold on. Why are, why are people honking at me? Oh man, I just missed my exit. Hold on, give me one second. Let me put the juice down. Yeah, no, I don't get it either, honestly. Hold on, I'm gonna put you on speaker. I'm gonna take a sip, okay? <sighs> oh, that's good. Oh, my lips are dry, Robin. Hold on, give me one second. Let me get my lip gloss. You know, no, I just, I honestly, I don't get it either. But, you know, maybe she's just a hater or something. I don't get it. I'm trying to get her on the show for next season and make her a full-time housewife. But who knows? Oh man, I just missed my exit again. Hold on, give me one second. Oh, where's the wheel? Oh, here we go. Uh, Robin, let me call you when I'm home. <laughs> I'm like, Giselle, if you don't get off the phone and drive. <laughs> we then head over to Robin's house and she's there with her fiance. <laughs> her fiance Juan and I'm like wait a minute this is like his sixth or seventh time on camera this season alone I think that that's a new world record <laughs> do y'all think that he'll actually be there for her at the reunion probably not but I guess we could wish but they're there with their two sons Corey and Carter and of course what are they talking about this wedding right and I'm like okay Robin you know it's one thing for you and Juan to try to fool the audience or try to fool each other or try to fool the cast but it's a whole other issue when you try to fool your own children like you're dragging them into your web of lies like Robin you can't be serious so she goes on to tell them I believe she goes on to tell Corey specifically the younger one she was just like oh so Corey you know me and your father and you know that man over there we're gonna get married and um yeah we're gonna get married and it's gonna be exciting <laughs> right Corey he's looking at her like you're gonna get married <laughs> Robin, the fact that your own, the youngest son out of the whole entire family, the fact that he's looking at you like you're crazy, it's very concerning. And he's looking at her like, you're going to get married. We're going to have a wedding. I thought you two were just going to get married. And that's that. Like, mommy, where's Karen Huger? <laughs> Then they start listing out a couple of places that she could have this destination wedding at between the four of them, right? So she was like, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about this place? Corey and Carter, they're looking at her like... Um, I, I, don't, I mean, what else do you want from us, mom? <laughs> and Robin, I have a suggestion for you and Juan if this wedding does go through. In the infamous words of Nene Leakes, I feel like you and Juan should get married at Neverland because it's never going to happen. <laughs> In the other words of Nene Leakes, nothing was there. <laughs> Like, she could not be serious. You know, first she's involving the cast and Giselle, her own bestie on the show, in her web of lies. Now she's adding her sons. Then she's adding us, the audience. And now she's adding me into this web of lies. And she expects us to believe this. On top of that, she has another victim in her web of lies. The tailor. She brings in a tailor to her house to measure them, you know, their bodies and chest and everything for their tuxedos, for their wedding. And I'm like, you're really involving this man. Like, what is going on? This tailor could, re could be out there doing his actual job on an actual relationship, on an actual marriage to a real relationship, as Karen said. <laughs> Yet instead, he's wasting his time here playing Barbie and Kendall and, and, and everything, trying to measure everybody for this wedding that's never going to happen. Like, you're wasting this man's time. But hopefully he got paid for it, though. 
Then we head over to Mia's house and she's planning her schedule around the Mexico trip. Her husband, Gordon, he walks in so she tells him, um, Gordon, are you gonna be able to go to Jeremiah's cupcake event at his school? You have to go because I'm not gonna be able to attend since I'm gonna be in Mexico with the cast. So are you gonna go or not? Gordon, he's looking at her like, I mean, I'll go to the event, but I mean, I can be in the parking lot. I'm not necessarily gonna go inside the school. And I'm like, are you their father? That's the least, that's the bare minimum that you can at least do. Just show up to their school event and you don't even wanna do that? Like, what's going on here? Mia, she was just like, well, I'm not gonna be here, so you have to go, you have to go, Gordon. And Gordon, again, this is one thing, this is one thing like A. Marie, and you can't even do that, like... Ooh, trash. But then Mia, she starts planting the seeds to the explosion that we're gonna see later on. And she was just like, Jacqueline is like upset with me because I'm not gonna find a babysitter for her children. And I mean, I told her that she could leave her children over at my house when her sister is babysitting. But I mean, not every single time. Every now and then is okay, but not every single time. You know what I'm saying? It could become very exhausting. And I mean, I understand what Mia is saying. And Jacqueline, you have some nerve to get upset with Mia for not finding a babysitter for your children. Even though the situation gets a little sloppy because Mia lets us know that the nanny that takes care of Mia's children, that is Jacqueline's sister. So, I mean, how does the nanny decide who is she going to babysit? <laughs> Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I get it that you're my sister and you're my blood, but I'm going to go with Mia. She pays more. <laughs> that is so sloppy right there. So, Jacqueline, I mean... You can only be upset upset with yourself, you know? You can't expect Mia to always play mom or dad or guardian to your children 24-7. And Mia, you should have set tighter boundaries with you and Jacqueline. Like, oh, maybe we shouldn't mix babysitters like this, let alone have your sister take care of my children because then it's going to be like tug of war. Like, who's going to have your sister for the night? You know, it's pretty sloppy. We're finally off to Mexico. So on the plane, we have Robin, Giselle, Candace, Mia, Mia's Pokemon, Jacqueline, and sleepy Sharice. Sharice is back this episode. Yeah, whatever. So we finally land in Mexico and Karen, Ashley, and Wendy, they're at the hotel. They're at the resort. They're setting everything up for Ashley's big surprise. So everybody, they're all getting to the airport. Then we find out that some drama happened on the plane between Jacqueline and Mia. And I'm like, wait a minute, Pokemon gone wild. What happened here? <laughs> So apparently, according to everybody on the plane, Jacqueline and Mia, they got into it because Jacqueline was upset because she didn't want to, you know, get a babysitter for her children. Mia was just like, well, your children are not my responsibility. I have my own. Jacqueline, she went on to say, Pikachu, Pikachu. <laughs> No, she went on to tell Mia, well, you know, I mean, it takes a village to raise children. And again, Jacqueline, whose problem is that? That's yours. Again, just because you two are best friends does not mean that she is the guardian of your children. What do y'all think? I mean, I don't know. Again, you need to set boundaries with with um, with um friends who have children if it gets, you know, sloppy like that. Like, oh, you're going to babysit them. I'm going to babysit them, et cetera, et cetera. Just keep those two situations apart as far as possible. So Mia, she's gossiping. She's telling everybody like, um, yeah, I don't get why Jacqueline is upset with me. I mean, I don't get it. Like, I'm not the mother of her children. I don't get it. I don't understand it. So Jacqueline, she's over there. And Jacqueline, you know, if I was Jacqueline, I would feel very uncomfortable because obviously I'm the odd one out next to Sharice. But, you know, she's the odd one out. Like, I'm friends because I'm here because of my friend. Yeah, I've kind of fallen out with her. Yet here we are. So back at the resort, Karen and Ashley, they're setting up. A, no, was it Ashley? Yeah, it was Ashley. So, okay, so Ashley and Karen, they're setting up little gifts for everybody. I believe Ashley, she puts her entire suitcase on the bed. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> You're going to sleep in that, but okay. So she takes out a bunch of dildos and she's planning on giving them to everybody because everybody needs to relax a little bit. So Karen, she comes in, she tells Ashley, Ashley, I found a couple of flashlights for Mia and Jacqueline as gifts. Look, click, click. And I'm like, Karen, please put those flashlights away before somebody takes a couple of shots and next thing you know, that flashlight is going in somebody's body. So please put that down. <laughs> So back at the airport, they're all getting on the sprinter man, right? And I keep thinking, okay, they had this huge blowout. They had this huge fight on the plane. You know, they were calling each other, bitch this, bitch that, blah, 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 all this and all that. Yet nobody recorded anything. Robin, a couple of episodes ago in Miami, you were so quick to take out your phone and record uh, Wendy, you know, going at it with Mia. Yet you couldn't take out your phone on the plane and you saw drama was happening right next to you. Yet you didn't record anything. Like, is there any anybody that's watching that's a stewardess on that specific plane? Did you watch? Did you see anything? <laughs> 
we need some proof i don't know i'm not i'm not necessarily buying it but okay so they get on the on the uh, on the van jacqueline she's not sitting next to mia she's sitting all the way in the back next to sleepy sharice so then candace she starts talking and she was just like oh you know so um you know has anybody ever like you know inspected your vagina and i'm like uh candace what kind of ideas do you have for this mexico trip <laughs> Robin, she doesn't want any part of this. She was just like, no, I don't want to do that. If you all want to inspect each other's vaginas, you could do that in the next room. That's that. And then they get off the, they finally get to the resort, right? We see Wendy, Ashley, and Karen. They have the maracas. They're dancing. They're like, viva Mexico. Hola, bien, buenvenidos and everything. So they finally get there. Uh, I believe as Mia is getting off the sprinter ran, somebody was just like, oh, your best friend Jacqueline, like, are you going to wait for her? Mia, she is so shady to her own best friend. And she was just like, um, I mean, Jacqueline, she's like a big bitch <laughs> and i'm like wait a minute <laughs> I'm like, that's your own friend and you're talking about her like that. Like, even if you do fall out with each other or you have an issue or you bump heads every now and then, that's still no way to treat your friend, Mia. And she's like, um, she's a big bitch. She can handle herself. Like, she's a grown woman. And I'm like, huh? well, okay. You know, if I was Jacqueline, I would have been like, um, Mia, come over here. Come over here. Who did you call it? Who, who you call a big bitch? <laughs> Absolutely not. But eventually, everybody, they get situated around this table to take drinks and everything. And then Jacqueline, she's sitting way far from Mia. Mia, she tells Giselle, um, I don't want to sit next to the devil. And I'm like, but you're going to sit next to Gis Giselle, the devil herself. <laughs> but okay. So she was just like, I'm not sitting next to the devil. Jacqueline, like, she's going to be over there. Like, we need some time apart. I'm going to be sitting over here. And I'm like, okay. So she's sitting over there next to uh, Robin and Giselle. Everybody else is sitting on the left side. Karen and Giselle, they're in the middle. And if you really pay co close attention to everything, Giselle and Karen, they were like playing ping pong, producing this entire scene between them because Jacqueline, she tells uh, Karen, I believe, oh, you know, right now I need some time away from Mia. Like, I'm not really cool with her right now. Like, I just don't like what she was saying about me, about my children, all this and all that. Karen, she was just like, huh, really? Wait a minute. What's going on between you and Mia? What's happening between you two? Like, what do you mean? So when you two fall out, is this typical? Like, what's going on? And I'm like, Karen, I'm on to you. And Jacqueline, you're just dumb enough to fall for Karen's trap instead of, you know, closing your own trap. She's just like, oh, yeah, I, Mia, me and her have fallen out before. But it has never gotten to this point or whatever. So Mia, she overhears this. And then Karen, she was just like, um, Mia, what's going on between you and Jacqueline? What's going on? Like, you two have fallen out before. What's happening? And then Mia, she lets us know this cra another crazy fact in their friendship. Again, this whole friendship between them, completely toxic. She goes on to say... Um, well, I mean, in 11th grade, when we were in high school, Jacqueline, she got mad at me because I wouldn't let her copy my homework, and she threw a brick at my head. <laughs> I'm like, what? Jacqueline did what with a brick? And she, she she tried to hit you in the head with a brick just because you wouldn't let her copy the homework? Like, I promise you, if anybody's in high school or in, or in college or whatever, it's never that serious. I promise you, the answers are somewhere on Google. <laughs> like, that is crazy. I'm like, what? So eventually Jacqueline she keeps whispering to Karen like oh she just needs to relax she just needs to relax she needs a muscle relaxer she needs a muscle relaxer so Wendy and Candace they're both looking like right next to Jacqueline they're like wait a minute what's going on the drama's happening but neither one neither one of us is involved so then eventually Jacqueline she tells Mia oh you just need some dick you just need some dick right now you just need some dick so then Mia she was just like um I need some dick um you really don't want me to talk about your couple of dicks your couple of dicks you really don't want me to talk about that next thing you you know, the, the spirit of NeNe Leakes jumped out. <laughs> she was just like, um, first of all, Jacqueline, if I was you, I would keep my legs closed to marry men. And I'm like, hold on, Mia, give me one second. Let me check my notes. Let's see, uh, Mia, let's see, episode four, season seven of the season, you said, <clears throat> and I quote, um, you were with Gordon, he was married, and you slept with him on the beach of Miami while he had a wife. He was also married. So, what's going on? <laughs> Like, if anything, it was kind of like, again, like that spider reference, the Spider-Man reference, like the two Spider-Mans pointing fingers at each other. I'm like, what are you then? Like, <laughs> you're no better than Jacqueline if that's the case. And I know that Kim Zosiak, I know she was somewhere in somebody's cardboard box with Croy, her husband. She was probably like, Croy, did, did you hear that? I think somebody's talking about me. <laughs> Next thing you know, Jacqueline, she starts crying and screaming. She gets up and she was like, you know what? Fuck you, Mia. 
screw you, S screw you. You know what, screw you, because I, I, uh, give me one second, I forgot my script. Um, I never slept with your husband. <clears throat> me, 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 me. <clears throat> I never slept with your husband. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Okay. Screw you, Mia, because I would never sleep with your husband. <laughs> And I'm like, uh, nobody said you did. And Sharice, Sharice jumped up. And Sharice, Sharice, I give her 10 points. Because Sharice was just like, um, a Jacqueline, um, a Jacqueline, um, nobody said you did. <laughs> when I tell you, when I heard Sharice say that to Jacqueline, I was laughing so hard. <laughs> I'm like, I was with Sharice for once. I mean, it only took, what, 13 episodes for me to finally be on her side because, I mean, Jacqueline, again, just like last week when you said the whole yeast infection, unprovoked. Again, you're revealing to us unprovoked that you didn't sleep with Gordon. Like, nobody said you did. <laughs> He's not the only married man that you could, you know, allegedly sleep with. So I'm not sure where that was coming from. That was just crazy. Wendy and Candace, they were both going off. They were like, wait, 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 what, what's going on? What's happening? What's going on? Candace, she's going over there to Mia like, maybe you should, you know, you should go talk to her. That's your best friend. Go talk to her. And Mia was just like, um, no, that's not happening. I'm not talking to her at all. So meanwhile, Jacqueline, she's crying and everything. Her, her acting skills were a little off. I'm like, um, I don't know if I believe this because I don't know. Part of me wants to believe it because Jacqueline, she did seem very hurt. But then the other part of me is thinking... Did they come up with this whole plot to get drama on the show between both of them and to try to make Jacqueline a full-time housewife for next season or try to keep on keep her on the show or something? And then they kind of just went off script and Mia took it too far and then hurt Jacqueline's feelings. I feel like that's what happened. Like Jacqueline was just like, okay, you could talk about me, but don't say too much. But of course, Mia, her mouth is reckless and she probably took it too far. And then it became real. So maybe it was fake at first and then it became real over time. Who knows? What do y'all think? But um, So Karen tells everybody that she has a surprise for them. So they all go out to the beach. They're greeted by this man with a feather in his hand. And I'm like, okay, what's happening? What's going on? Karen, what type of kinky shit are you into? Come to find out that he is some type of shaman and he is going to perform a ritual on the group, you know, to cleanse them. And I'm like, Ugh, of course, the housewives love cleansing each other. And what do they do two seconds later? Continue their toxic behavior. But okay, so he, you know, he gets the feather and he waves it around your body. Next thing you know, he blows a bunch of smoke in your face and i'm like absolutely not <laughs> we're still in the middle of covid and you mean to tell me that i'm just gonna come out to mexico on this beach and have a random man just blow smoke into my face absolutely not he's probably blowing his breakfast in my face his scrambled eggs he probably had a couple of mimosas <laughs> And you want me to just sit there and take it in the name of cleansing? Absolutely not. I was with Candace. Candace was like, uh, no. I was also with Giselle. Giselle was just like, um, we really don't need cleansing. All we need is tequila. <laughs> I'm like, look at that, Giselle. But the shaman, he was just like, okay, everybody. So let's talk to the birthday girl. Ashley, what do you want out of life? Ashley, she goes on to say, you know, I just, I really... I want my season eight contract, season nine contract, possibly. I want my house that Michael promised me. And, you know, I just want a man that's going to love me and everything. And, um, and yeah, I just, I just want to, I, I want to have a great life and be happy. And I'm like, okay, Ashley, whatever. So eventually the shaman, he tells everybody, okay, everybody. So hug each other, hug each other because production and Bravo Andy, they told me that I need to cause drama. So everybody tried hugging each other. <laughs> So then Mia, she attempts to hug Jacqueline. Jacqueline, she continues spiraling out of control. She's crying. And, you know, I'm like, wait a minute. I thought you were, you left your emotions inside. But I, I guess she was still hurt about what Mia said to her. So she's not accepting the hug. She was just like, no, no, thank you. That's that. In her head, she's probably crying because she was just like, if I really do end my friendship with Mia, Gordon is not going to pay my car payment. <laughs> That's probably what's going through her head. That's what's making her so emotional. So then uh, they all hug each other and they're like, okay, so let's all get ready for a dinner. They all go back to the room and then we see Robin. Robin goes into her room. She sees a little surprise that they got her and they're like, oh, what's going on? She opens it and it's a veil. And I'm like, oh, here we go. So she puts on the little bride veil and I'm like, oh, look at Robin. The one and only time we'll probably ever see her wearing a veil. But she's wearing it and then she goes out to the window, right? Out on the balcony. She calls her fiance. <coughs> 
Juan, she calls him and she's talking to him and she's giving him a little heads up. She hangs up. Next thing you know, Mother Nature herself, even she could not believe in this whole relationship between Juan and Robin because she was just like, I send the power of wind. And then the veil that Robin had on, next thing you know, it goes flying. <laughs> It goes flying down the hotel room and we never see it again. And Robin, she was just like, wait, where's where's my veil? I, I, maybe that's a sign that I shouldn't get married. And I'm like, Robin, I must agree. <laughs> we get to this dinner and Karen, Ashley, and Giselle are the first one at the table. Giselle, surprisingly, she starts letting us know more about her personal life and who she's dating. And I'm like, wow, it only took seven seasons, but I mean, better late than never. So she goes on to say that she's dating this man named Steve. He's always been around her life, but now they're kind of trying to date. So Ashley, she was just like, wait, so is Steve a good kisser? Giselle was just like, yeah, he's a good kisser. He knows how to use his tongue. And then in the confessional, the producers ask, so Giselle, what exactly do you look for in a man? Giselle was just like, I mean, he needs to know how to make me laugh and he, um, he needs to have a big dick. <laughs> well, don't we all want that, Giselle? <laughs> Don't forget, he also has to have a nice butt, money, a car, his parents need to treat you nicely. You know, the basics. <laughs> so then they start talking about Michael and I'm like, come on now, Ashley. Like, we, it's already bad enough that you were talking about him in Miami. Now you want to talk about that zombie here in Mexico? Like, give it a break. Next thing you know, Sleepy Sharice, she walks in and she makes a grand entrance as if anybody's supposed to care. If I was Karen, I would have been like, so anyway, continue talking about Michael. <laughs> Like, they made a whole moment out of that. And I'm like, uh, it's just Sharice. But okay, so she sits down. Then I believe we see uh, Wendy. Wendy comes in, followed by Mia. Both of them and Robin were the best dressed at this table. I really like their outfits. Candace, she comes out with Jacqueline and... You know, kudos to Candace because Candace was a better person than I ever was because she was actually nice to Jacqueline, you know, after they got into it a couple of episodes ago in Miami and she was trying to be there for her. She was even trying to be there for Mia and trying to mend their friendship. And if I was Candace, I would have took Wendy to the side like, look at them. They were just against us. And now look, they're against each other. Let's laugh. Cheers <laughs> to a girl's weekend. <laughs> But, you know, she's trying to be there for Jacqueline. Jacqueline, she looked like she was actually crying the entire afternoon. Her, her, her whole entire face, her eyes specifically, they look swollen. And I'm like, wow, she like Mia, that whole fight with her must have really gotten to her if it was real. So they sit down, they order tacos, they order food, drinks. The food looks so good from the way they were eating it. And I'm like, wow, the food must be delicious because they're, they're trying to fight with each other. But they're like... Uh, give me one second, Sharice. I'm going to fight with you in a second after this bite of taco. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you something. <laughs> That's exactly how it played out because I believe Giselle, of course, she starts it off and she was just like, oh, so Karen, you know that video that Sharice sent in the group chat? I thought it was funny, but I think it bothered you, right? Or whatever. And I'm like... Giselle, come on now. Enough with this obvious producing. And sure, the video that she's talking about is the video that Sharice sent to the group chat of Mia and Karen both rubbing each other's breasts against each other back at the club in Miami. So Sharice, she goes on to say, oh, well, um, Karen, um, I mean, if, if I knew that would have bothered you, I, 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 I probably would have um, never sent it. I mean, I probably sent it by accident. I, I don't really know how to work an iPhone. So Karen, Karen, she went from zero to 100 right away. She was just like, um, well, wait a minute, Sharice. I was never bothered by that. I just thought that maybe if you wanted to be friends with me, maybe you could have sent me that video personally, privately, you know, like, oh, look, it's a funny video. Ha ha. How are you doing? And then maybe we could have moved forward. But no, you decided to send that in the group chat. And I just really don't like it Sharice I really don't like it at all so then Sharice she was just like um but um the 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 thing is with the video um yeah I I agree I guess but I mean I just want to I just want to talk about me I just want to talk about me and you and um this friendship or thing or or whatever that um that production is trying to force between me and you. So Karen, she's not letting her talk. She was just like, um, first of all, Sharice, nobody has been talking about you for years. Nobody has even mentioned you. Nobody even talks about you. And I must agree with Karen. I mean, nobody's talking about you, Sharice. Why are you on the show? <laughs> Like, I just, I just don't understand it. I really don't get it. I don't understand. Like, she continues trying to force herself into Karen's life. And, I mean, if Karen doesn't want anything to do with you, then let it be. She doesn't need to explain to you anything. You t Again, it would it, be a little bit more different if, 
you know, Sharice wanted, if she, if Sharice was actually trying to do something with Karen or trying to be friends with her genuinely off the show before they started filming. But of course, it's just so obvious that she's coming onto the show with a reason, with a purpose to try to get a moment out of Karen so she could slide her way somehow onto season eight. That's exactly what she's doing. It's not genuine. You know, you don't care to be Karen's friend. So cut it out. And then Sharice was just like, well, I mean, you, you were, you were not there with me when, when I, when I divorced and, um, when I divorced, uh, when when I when I got a divorce from my husband, and you weren't there for for um, my father when when he passed away or, or or anything, Karen. So then, Karen, this is where Karen kind of lost me, and the whole thing just went completely left. She was just like, um, well, first of all, Sharice, you were not there when when my whole situation with my mother, when my mother passed away, you were not there at all. You were never there for me at all. And then Sharice, she was trying to explain like, what are you talking about? Like, yes, I was. I did. She drew. I believe she said that she was driving to Karen to be there for her but Karen wouldn't let her talk she kept over speaking over her and I'm like Karen can you just be quiet so I can hear what Sharice is trying to you know mumble out <laughs> I just did not understand it. And then Karen, she was getting all emotional and you could tell that it was really bothering her. You know, the, the subject of her mother, which is understandable, but you're the one that brought it up. Sharice never spoke on your mother at all. You were the one that bringing that up to begin with. So you got upset by yourself. She's getting all red in the face and everything. She starts pointing her finger at Sharice. Next thing you know, she gets up and I'm like, wait a minute, Karen, what are we doing? <laughs> I felt like I was watching Girls Gone Wild, Grandma Edition, because she gets up and she was just like, first of all, first of all, look, first of all, Sharice, if you ever talk about my mom, I will fuck you up, okay? Stop it. Don't you ever do that ever again. And I'm like, Karen, what, what's going on? What's happening? I must have missed the entire scene or maybe they cut the whole episode into pieces or something because I'm not understanding why she got so upset. Obviously, like I've been saying from the very beginning, Karen is hiding something that Sharice obviously knows and that's obviously true or has some type of truth to it and she just doesn't want to uh, let Sharice talk because she knows that she's going to reveal it and she's going to have to explain herself. But... I don't get why she got so upset. She's pointing her finger. She's like telling Sharice that she's going to F her up, screw her up. Everybody's trying to calm her down. At the same time, they're all eating though because y'all saw Wendy and Giselle. Giselle, she was in mid-bite when Karen got up. She was just like... <laughs> and I'm like, it's like a dinner and a show. Next thing you know, Sharice gets up and Sharice was just like... Oh, fuck. Uh, hold on, Karen. Give me one second. Hold on. Give me one second. I'm, I'm going to fight with you. Just give me one second. Ah, oh, my back. My knees. Uh, fuck. Okay. Okay. I I'm standing up. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. D do it again? Uh, that you're going to fuck me up? Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> throat> I, 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 wish, I wish you would. <laughs> I'm like, please. And then Giselle in the confessional. Um, I'm not sure what's going on. Am I missing something? There, I'm not sure why I'm seeing this ger geriatric, <laughs> geriatric fight between both of them. And I'm like, Giselle, you're not young yourself. You're like up there in their ages as well. So I'm not sure why you're throwing such a shady comment towards them. But Karen, you know, she gets up. Reese gets up. It's the battle of the Grand Dames. And that was that. It was left out of to be continued with everybody trying to calm Karen down. And again, I just don't understand why Karen was so upset. She was really upset and screaming her head off for no reason saying oh don't talk about my mother don't talk about my mother don't talk about my mother nobody was talking about your mother karen but whatever that was the episode and you know you all let me know whose side you on and what you thought about this entire episode bye everybody Mwah.